Thank you very much, uh, Pierluigi, for this uh, uh, invitation. I really, I really appreciate it very much. Pleasure being here, old friends. Uh, particular nice to see Myron, Jean, all the others. Um, of course, it's uh, so good having you here. So um, I'm going to. Uh, oh, thanks also, Jessica, for allowing me to to you know to switch and to talk earlier. Uh, this topic about downstaging is uh, is still fascinating. I would, I would say on one side, on the other side is uh, is it frustrating, if I may, because as you see, even though in the last fifteen years we have been you know collecting evidences of any kind, but methodologically weak in a way, either in terms of numerosity, respect, retrospective design, and any other. Uh, so we are frustrated in this. And in the clinical practice, probably most, more than 90% of our centers are totally devoted to select patient for downstaging and to actively downstage patient in real life clinical practice. So there is this kind of dichotomy between evidences and clinical practice. Now, um, I think that is worth to uh, start from my banal and classic classification of kind of uh, downstaging, stratifying from relative and absolute. Relative is a kind of old methodology to my eyes. This is just a personal impression. So the need to bring back to a certain you know, criteria for transplantation uh, the patient. And I will explain why to me is a kind of old question. I am much more, you know, uh, fascinated by the concept of absolute uh, downstaging. Absolute downstaging is the one that is aimed to, you know, provide response to therapy, test the response to therapy, to a therapy pressure to the patient, which is actually, as Pierluigi was saying, a surrogate of uh, tunology. And in association with test of time, this is a nice, very nice selection process for patient undergoing liver transplantation to select the best biology in, to, to, to promote uh, liver transplantation. So uh, the, the, the test of, uh, of therapy is an old concept. It goes back to uh, this seminal paper, which is absolutely uh, outstanding to my eyes, back to 2006. Uh, it was done by, as you see, independently from the macromorphological parameters, it was pretty clear that within or without Milan criteria, the fact that the patient was responding to a pressure of equalization then was associated with fantastic results in terms of postoperative survival. And from that time on, uh, we have paper going back to 15 years here in Italy, because at that time we had a very high pressure in terms of epidemiological uh, episodic carcinoma presence in our settings envision the fact that the response to therapy was a nice way to select patients for any kind of procedure, even in particular liver transplantation. And you see how, for example, the uh, published a study uh, 10 years ago, suggesting to exclude patients in progressive disease while waiting and while undergoing to therapeutic pressure. Um, in this environment, uh, I mean, the, the Vincenzo Massaferro uh, study was developed, the one that has been so nicely uh, depicted by, uh, by Citerio. Uh, and to my eyes, that was uh, um, a very difficult uh, situation. Uh, I, I was not able to, to apply to this study because my ethical committee was considered this uh, borderline ethically, because even at that time, we were aware about the fact that, you know, uh, not undergoing to transplantation uh, would, uh, you know, associate this patient to uh, a bad destiny. And so I was not able to participate, but this is a similar study. It changed completely our view because we, we he was able to, to demonstrate the efficacy uh, in a randomized setting of, of uh, uh, downstaging. Uh, but moreover, uh, the relevance of this study is the fact that it was one of the very first, probably a unique study showing a randomized setting which is the benefit in terms of gain life expectancies of liver transplantation if compared with alternative therapies. And we know, and we have to know that the only relevant endpoint measure in liver transplantation is, it is the gain in life expectancies, much more than the overall survival five years as has been considered so far. 
Uh, so one next thing is how do we monitor and we qualify a response to therapy? It is pretty obvious that we need to use embracist. I'm not sure that the, you know, the penetration of this methodology is capillary, at least in our setting. Uh, we, we need to promote that. Uh, because if you use a nice uh, and accurate evaluation in terms of MRSTIF response, then it's pretty clear that you find out that the response to lacrolegional therapies is one of the strongest predictors of failure after transplantation, uh, either in terms of uh, intent to survive, either in terms of risk of recurrence and, and power. If you compare the risk of uh, um, ACC recurrence post transplantation for patients that do not respond to local register therapies is greater, is an odd ratio of three if compared to 1.3 for those patients that are even progressing while waiting. So, this is again the therapeutic pressure is an incredible prognostic feature that we may use in our clinical setting. But now, uh, a new methodology of defining the quality of response again in, in the play in, on the table. And this is Lee Ratz, uh, and some authors claim that when you have combination of regional therapy, for example, chemo and ablation therapies, they may be uh, an advantage in using Lee Ratz in terms of evaluation of what have, has been uh, the effective, uh, effectiveness of the therapy that you apply. And this is also true because Lee Ratz el evaluates single nodules and not the, the overall burden of, of the tumor. The other um, evaluation issue, uh, which is pretty well clear in the last 20 years, is the fact that there is an incredible, still an incredible discordance within definitive pathology and what we evaluate at the moment of transplantation. Still 25% of the patients are dilated, upgraded according to the methodology. So in part, that's the reason why relative downstaging is in a way still ineffective because unless you use uh, total tumor volume, which doesn't take into consideration small nodule, which are the one that, you know, may be tricky in the stage, uh, you may lose patients, you may uh, lose uh, your accuracy in, you know, applying and including in one stage or another due to the insufficient accuracy of the methodology or the radiology methodology before transplantation. Another piece of information which is important is a negative drawback of morphological evaluation that you may have heterogeneity of response. You may have an, a mixed response. Some nodules may increase their, their proliferation after uh, the therapeutic pressure, other may respond. And macromorphology is not a good tool. You may have same mention, and maybe you can have a turn in terms of uh, biological aggressiveness of the tumor, you're not able to capture with macromorphological uh, features. This is very tricky when you evaluate treatment pressure. That's the reason why the perfect tool is a biomarker. Uh, alpha protein, I, I don't need to recall how alpha protein has been, you know, game changing in the last years. Uh, and you can see how, even though you have an old camera in, people with huge, uh, alpha fetoprotein level. If you have a pressure, a therapeutic pressure that brings back the patient down less than 100 and less than 20, even better, then you're going to have a very good profile in terms of results post transplantation and risk of recurrence transplantation. This is the reason why the bio uh, response, biochemical response is much more accurate in terms of. Uh, biological evaluation of the response to dance staging if compared to the, math, the, the morphological uh, evaluation. So we need to go in this direction much more than, you know, take into consideration the staging, the macromorphological staging, which is the problem here, that only a few prevalence of people uh, are again having high levels of alpha fetoprotein or even uh, increased level of alpha protein. We know that less than 50% of the patients has any change in alpha fetoprotein. The tool is limited in terms of the population that can be used in. So we need to go in the direction of explosion, of exploration and explosion of pipeline of huge amount of uh, biological signatures of the tumor. And, and Jessica will develop on that. We, we did it in the past, for example, exploring fetoMRNI and vascular endothelial growth factor in their capability to stratify patient according to 
prognosis in the setting of real transplantation and after a pressure of alpha of three before transplantation. But again, this is a very important uh, lesson for the future. We need to go in this direction in order to be more accurate. Uh, another, another negative drawback that you have to consider that the therapy is supposed to be complete as much as we can. Because a partial response is very risky. You, you know how a pressure and ischemic pressure may develop more aggressive clones, and this has been depicted and described in, in a number of, of publications. So even when you have a partial ablation or a partial chemoembolization, you, you can promote aggressive clones. And in, this may justify the proportion of patients then have unsuccessful downstaging because you promote the evolution of an aggressive tumor instead of controlling the disease. So the whole things we need inter artificial intelligence, you know, to in increase our capability to intercept biology by biological uh, tools and by biochemical tools as well. How about the complete response issue? Should we transplant the people that has, has a complete response after transplantation? Well, the answer is yes, because uh, uh, close to 82% of the patients, even with a complete response, they still have you know, uh, clones, active clones at the pathological definitive uh, evaluation. So these people is going to have, you know, just a morphological response. It's not ever, it's very rarely a complete response. And indeed, uh, you may control and reduce very much the risk for about, and that's the reason why the intensive treat for the complete response is much better. But these people, these patients, to my eyes, deserve transplantation as well. With a low priority, however, we showed in this cancer um, publication by Alessandro Vitale using the same setting of X6 uh, that when you do not, this is a retrospective study, when you do not transplant a patient that is a, has a complete response to therapy, you have a profile of which, which is close to overlap the one achieved by transplantation. Clearly, the longer the follow-up, the better the survival, but at least, at least uh, uh, from the point of view of transplant benefit and priority, you are supposed not to give priority to patients with complete response because they have time to wait and you prioritize the patient that do not have alternative therapies available. So transplant uh, benefit again first. How about relative? Downstaging. The reason why I don't personally believe in this uh, uh, push to get the patient into a predefined criteria, we are going to go in a world of you know heterogeneity. Uh, you know, some are going into the Milan criteria, other in the UCSF, other in the tumor, and this is going to make even more difficult the you know the evolution of this field. It needs homogeneous approaches, big numbers. And, and very repeatable settings uh, all over, I think, the world. So, but this is my absolute uh, um, personal interpretation that arbitrary setup is increasing in the set of relative downstaging. Do we have, when we do a downstaging, the need for an upper limit? Uh, superficially speaking, yes, because when you stratify according to this pathology, for example, a couple of years ago, you stratify according to, uh, you know, the old commas group versus a predefined UCSF downstage group. Of course, you have an intention to treat, which is better in brain if compared to old commas, and you have a, a greater dropout probability in old commas. But this is due to the fact that you do not, you're not able to, we are not able to, interpret the biology aggressiveness in this population. And the bigger the, the burden, the greater the possibility to have patients uh, higher biology aggressiveness. This is just an incapability to detect the patient with uh, good biology, even within all cameras. And, and the proof of that is the alpha fetoprotein power. Because again, in the all camera setting for alpha fetoprotein, the results are absolutely overlapping to the people that has uh, low, relatively low or intermediate alpha fetoprotein levels. So it's a matter of how you look at it. Um, to define any way, if you wish, an upper limit, you can use, I think, this beautiful computational medicine example, which comes from uh, um, Quirinoli and, and Jan, 
uh, they were able to you know, uh, find out within 10 uh, variables that the number and diameter and alphabetical project were impacting uh, very much the, the overall uh, statistics. And importantly enough, taking into consideration only competitive analysis, looking only to mortality related to the tumor, not the overall mortality, able to identify an area of relatively safety in terms of uh, starting point, uh, according to alpha fetoprotein and the sum of diameters and number of nodules, um, allowing to reduce the expected mortality below the threshold, arbitrary threshold of 30%, you know, post-transplantation. That is supposed to be the one. With this setting, you expect a mortality related to cancer, which is a 15%, which is a very good tool. And as you can see, the greater is the selection, the higher the probability to have a dropout. Uh, because if you select a very tight selection process, then you risk to have a lot of patients that are getting out and dropping out while waiting. Quickly enough, uh, in, in a paradox, if you include from the beginning very advanced tumor, BCLC, and even D in some instances, in this same uh, uh, thrombotic patient with neoplastic thrombus in the portal vein, you may achieve some results in the long term, even though worse if they are clearly to an, a, a, a transplant, normal transplant setting. But again, should we look to the benefit or not? Even though you're going to have 50% survival five years, then the alternative therapy is basically nothing and you are going to achieve a huge amount of gain in life years. So my personal conclusion, if uh, even in, you know, super downstaging, you have to consider transplant benefit in the context of your particular organ availability. Let's say living donation, let's say a bio group, let's say a very low pressure uh, donor waiting list and waiting list situation. How about this rate is very variable because is, is too much heterogeneous the way we treat with downstage a patient. It goes from 40% up to 80%, 80%. Because the modality, the capability, the aggressiveness of you know, the downstaging is different. I want to present this uh, by court Giovanni Benarecci, this, this meta analysis, which was recently done according to the, the old studies. And it's very easy to, 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 to find how. Uh, the successful is, is ranging between 35 to 87 again. The, clearly, the, the population downstaged has a great dropout rate if compared to the normal population transplanted for a carcinoma. The tumor progression is greater again. The liver deterioration is even greater, maybe also as a matter of progression of the tumor. But at the end of the day, you're not going to have a worse outcome in five years. And this is according to all. So the successor is, is extremely variable. So which is the best therapeutic tool in order to increase our homogeneity in terms to achieve good results in terms of pressure, therapeutic pressure? Well, I'm strongly supporting the minimally invasive approach. I don't have that evidence here, unfortunately, because we are not, we are not being able to you know, put solid paper on the table. But I am personally convinced that uh, if you can treat potentially radical with rejection in minimally invasive approach or with ablation in minimally invasive approach, you have a greater potential for iterative approaches and you increase your probability to have complete response, which in turn is associated with a better results after downstaging, either in terms of lower dropout risk, either in terms of results, better results in terms of recurrence-free survival post-transplantation. But this need to be developed in terms of science in the future. As far as taste and, uh, and, uh, and E290, uh, recent gastroenterology and hepatology show that the, the potential for a partial response, not a complete response, the partial response is relatively high, close to 80, 80 85% in this uh, US study, even though the limit of the study is that the, the, the follow up is only two years and we should take into consideration that. But clearly, the effectiveness, you can see how the curve is rising sharply and, and this is uh, a matter of, of efficacy and, and this is a useful tool but again probably the capability and this is an pathology shown 
the capability to achieve complete response and in turn, you know, to increase the efficiency of the downstaging process is probably lower if compared to um, potential therapies, but it, this needs to be uh, demonstrated in the future. A completely different setting is, is now in the pipeline, you know, a huge amount of uh, protocols available in terms of systemic therapy, but here the framework is completely different. Now we are not testing the biology aggressiveness with these tools. We are treating the extra hepatic cells. So this is a real neoadjuvant approach if compared to the downstream, which is just uh, you know, a surrogate of biological aggressiveness. And we are not embedded yet these new protocols in the staging uh, setting. I will do it, I hope, uh, as soon as possible. So as far as best therapeutic tool is concerned, I think that the therapeutic hierarchy is still in place here. Best to adopt when possible potential radical therapy and then select the, the other one. How long the test of time? Now here only to opinion, three months is the one that has been set in many uh, you know, experiences, but no uh, uh, strong evidence is, is so far available. And no is also in the pipeline because no clinical trial gov study is including a clear uh, you know, focus endpoint on which is the waiting, which is the most efficient in this setting. So we need to be uh, uh, focused on validating that in the future. How about allocating future, allocating issues uh, present in the future? Again, I don't need to recall how I have been, uh, you know, dedicating the last 10 years to the benefit issue. You know, is uh, the, one of the inspirators of that. And, and clearly, if you look at the benefit, the downstaging setting is the best one in terms of gaining life expectancy. That's the reason why in Italy, uh, epistinoma and they're going to successful staging are straight in one. So they have absolute priority because they gain a lot of amount, a huge amount of in life expectancy because they do not have alternatives in terms of therapeutic uh, approaches. I go to my conclusion, sorry for the delay, uh, just citing the, the national guidelines recommendation, five-year work, highly solid in terms of methodology behind this work. And thanks to uh, Terry Trevisani for this incredible effort. The, the relevant peak of for downstaging is, is downstaging indicated in EPSOA beyond the oncological criteria, any oncological criteria, not only Milan criteria, any oncological criteria, using as comparator the non-transplant intermediate BCLC B epsilon carcinoma. Only two evidence here. The one from the Mazzaferro study, the Ronald clinical trial, and another one which is methodologically sustainable and in a way um, affordable from uh, the, uh, the grade point of view, which is this study, um, comparing liver resection, oncological liver resection to the downstage, and you see how the benefit uh, is, is, is very low and the difference. However, at the end of the day, at the end of the systematic review, uh, the Italian multi-society group, 100 people, put a strong recommendation on adopting downstaging, even though based on low grade evidence. This is my conclusion, saying that we need to have clear in mind, as Pedro Luigi was saying, that downstaging is just a surrogate tool for biology selection patients. Nothing more than that. It's not a neoadjuvant therapy. You're not in most cases achieving any complete response, even though you need to have as a goal the complete response because that Accuracy in treating these patients increase your chances to perform better in the overall liver transplant setting and process. That independently from the clinical protocol, I, I am not hoping that we are going to achieve agreements in which is the best protocol to adopt. We need to improve the capability to predict biology, including in response to therapy, other cofactors of biology uh, you know, evaluation uh, as a radiomics, as a CAT scan, uh, PET CAT scan, as computational medicine, uh, data analysis on biomarkers, simple one, like, for example, lymphocyte, uh, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio, and of course, all that will come in terms of biomarker and cell biology uh, insight, and, and, and Jessica will, will tell us about that. Systemic approaches are 
close out of the era and we'll open a completely different uh, era uh, where we will use, we use that uh, protocol as neoadjuvant strategies in order to treat extra, extra hepatic cells in order to increase our results post-transplantation. Thank you very much for, for, for your attention. Thank you, Professor Cillo. Thank you, uh, Uberto, for this lecture. I think that you have an institutional commitment in a few minutes. So uh, as a chair of the webinar, just a, a brief question to you uh, before you leave it from the, from the webinar. How do um, standardize the application of downstaging treatments to avoid the, to treat patients only with the in-house available treatments so the, the standardization is far to come as you well know and that's the uh, reason for your provocative uh, question <laughs> but we have clear ideas and we have protocols mm, we don't use in padova any upper limit for the selection process uh, again the process and the test of time is is the most relevant uh, uh, piece of information you can get so we go more than three months. And the reason why is that on top of it, we also have long period of waiting times, which is positive in that sense, because it prolongs the test of time. And then you increase your capability to select independently from the old cameras or, or upper selection limits. We aggressively adopt, adopt iterative protocols uh, with minimal invasive uh, uh, approaches, as you know, we do laparoscopic uh, ablation and we biopsy the tumors in order to increase our capacity to stratify and in, to, to give more pieces of information about biological stratification. We use alpha fetoprotein, we use neutrophil lymphocyte. In some borderline cases, we also use alpha feto mRNA vascular endothelial cofactor. That's the, the things that we are having in house. Any disease is out of the waiting list.